Hello and welcome to episode 62 of our RimWorld playthrough. We are back at it. This time, I don't think we have any immediate existential threats to our way of life out here on the tundra, which feels like the first in a long time. Um, Edgar is currently getting some health back. We have some injuries we're looking on and, uh, you know, as I say, we're not getting any problems. Um, we have a polar bear hunting. So we're just going to get Havoc on board. We're going to get a slimy guy on board. We're going to get Havoc to take the shot. Okay. Did not like the, uh, the burst from the SMG there. Definitely scared him off. Ooh, stomach shot. Um, we have to take out this bear. Okay. Havoc is now on the menu. Don't don't shoot right away. Let him get him let him line up. Take the shot. Okay. This polar bear is now barely injured. Um who are we who are we chasing? We are chasing Slimy Guy. Oh, and that was actually fairly quick. Um yeah, that that polar bear was handily dealt with. Um okay, we got smoke leaf. Um we got llama carrion scrap. We have our research, which is almost done. We have piles of advanced components. Um some regular components as well. We are working up our or wait for our steel here. We have quite a bit of steel. We need plasteel. We need uranium. We need uranium. Uh, so we're going to get that uranium going. Uh, our floors are almost done. The wood floors throughout the base. Things are looking pretty, pretty good in this little, little humble abode. I think, you know, another potential thing we could wear look at is finishing double walling this bottom side we're definitely going to want to do a double wall up here double wall um in the the dormitory area i think and we might even think about putting an extra door here maybe a little door down here and uh or or potentially yeah maybe here here like i like the idea of a door there that we could increase our or improve our access maybe even maybe a door at the very back although that would be kind of not defended if people just decided to come straight at it and knock it down we'd have to set up in the barn and that's not always ideal um we are getting some wood not wood some food from these muffalos um we decided that the problem last episode with our animals was that uh the animals um, I guess the animals, we could say the animals are supposed to stay in a particular area. Because right now they're kind of just doing whatever they want. Um, I mean, yeah, we, we could just allow them only, only within this little area. So if we expand, manage area, new area rename oops rename this to animals and then we have the animals stay in the animal area and then we expand the allowable area of these fine furry friends we'll say yeah it's fine if you're hanging out in here it's fine if you hang out with the other animals don't mind that one bit it's fine if you chill in here it's fine if you chill by the entrance. Um, that's the way I, I would kind of prefer you to go. Uh, I guess I want the polar bear maybe to come in here sometimes because he might eat the meat. Um, that seems fine. But that'll limit the filth we're getting inside the rest of the base because 
right now the polar bear is just you know traipsing around we also don't really need this classroom we could potentially move some of this furniture off to the side off to storage somewhere and then you know dust off the old desks if we ever get children again um, we have a combat supplier trade ship we're gonna get drunken cat all aboard we're really gonna sell some of these clubs uh, you know nine nine pennies um, some pretty junky stuff here but getting rid of these bows is actually really convenient um, and some of these bows are actually worth a few few pennies um, and hey look at that this like machine pistol um, and that gives us a decent decent little chunk of change um, we could also sell the tea sell the smoke leaf joints and uh, yeah, um, let's just buy all your components. The ABC rule, always buy components. Um, and I think you'll note, yeah, we need eight advanced components, three regular components, another six regular components, um, and four advanced components, and then steel, gold, persona core. Um, I think we need glass steel is another resource that's like next on the list. We do have a nice little little bit of it here. So we finished um, the old thrusters and really now it's like do whatever we want. We can do things like get some marine armor, we can get like pulse charge munitions, make some charge rifles. Um, we could make, uh, you know, eventually some of these really fancy bionic things. Um, we get a gene processor, auto can growth vats. That could be cool. Um, hospital bed, transport pods. That might be neat. Um, there's all sorts of fun things. There's also lots of like very basic things we could get. Um, I think for now. Get some. Let's get bionic replacements. Maybe we'll replace some missing toes by replacing the entire leg with something awesome. I think there's also an opportunity for us, for our ideologen, to reform our ideologen. And we could do something potentially um, where we we add add a meme. Um, we add a style category, so we could add uh, transhumanists. We could become transhumanists. This would um, give us research specialists. Um, it would give us uh, sleep accelerator options. It would also give us that accelerated bio sculpting. So like, there's something cool to be done there. Um, which is kind of neat. Uh, let's see. Anything I could change some bits and bobs, but um, I, I think for now we're gonna leave it alone. But we do, we could always do that, and you know, become more in line with the technology. All right. Um, launch report. We need a cryo sleep casket. We need three ship engines, a sensor cluster. Which is that? So we need one, two, three. We need ship. We need uh, the cryo sleep casket. We're just gonna stick that right on the front there. Um, and we're gonna have an engine. Uh, boom. Boom. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know how we're going to do these engines. These engines. These engines are going to be weird. This whole ship is kind of weird. Um, I mean, I, 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 I feel like two engines is the right number, but who knows? 
we're gonna have some monstrosity flying out of here um at least something like that for now so we need another zillion steel plasteel another zillion advanced components um we are rip roaring away we're gonna get this uh cryosleep casket um up and running next we're just gonna do it we're just gonna get these things built one one at a time so the ship is is literally taking shape um we have this hilarious monstrosity that once again the goal is just get drunken cat off the planet that was our initial colonist our initial naked brutality uh friendo and we need to get get them right off um look at all that steely or plasteel uh we're just leaving that right there so plasteel is absolutely going to be a bottleneck we've tapped out that um i need to hit this up again so what do we have we have, we have plasteel there we have regular steel we have regular steel so we do have like a decent amount of steel um oh, we did have another i forgot about this one i thought there was so we have another big hunk of plasteel right there which is huge um okay we also have a fairly substantial raid um, and they are going to avoid avoid the traps um, and the turrets, which I don't really know what that means um, in terms of the way we've set up our base. Okay, they are coming in. Yep. Oh boy. Um, cockroach. That is a lot of fire. All right. That, that is so much fire and those turrets are exploding. Okay, they're fleeing. Um, Put out the fires, friends. Those turrets need to get doused immediately. Uh, is this... What do we have? Fire foam? Well done, drunken cat. Alright. Um, okay, we have death in five hours. Um, actually, not a bad colonist. Um, drunken cat needs to prioritize tending immediately. And there we go. Beautiful. Of course, we're not quite done our crematorium. We've already de deconstructed our old one, which, you know, is the classic Balco strategy. Um, I'm actually really impressed with that fire foam popper. That thing was cool. Can we make another one? Can we like recharge that in any way? Um, it, would, it is recharged. Okay. I, I had, I've never actually used one of those before. I never really had the need to. I could, I suppose I could have used that to like put drunken cat out that one time when, when she was on fire for half of a fight um slimy guy needs some treatment uh we just have a minor bruise in the torso um we have this prisoner here that we need oh they will never they're unwaveringly loyal well what okay okay it's fine this is, we're turning our prisoner into a morale boost, which is fine. That's, sometimes that's all you need. A little, little boost of morale. Um, okay, granite blocks. Stone blocks are a significant bottleneck for us right now. Um, 
We have so many little things to be hauling. We have all these bodies outside. Um, who are our haulers? I mean, cockroaches is, is doing their best right here. Carrying all the garbage that we've accumulated over the years. Um, we need to clean up that fire foam. There's still so many bodies. Um, is there any way that anyone were missing or missing sandstone chunks? Well, what if we just, ex I mean, what are you doing? You're stargazing. So what, what if he just said, like, after your stargaze, get that. You know, everybody who's awake, just come, come grab a chunk. We need some of these. We're going to prioritize the chunks. Night needing help. All right. You need a bedroom to get... Okay. Um, you just need a, a room to house a night. That that seems doable. Um, where did all our food go? I mean, I guess we've been making a lot more meals. We still have a ton of meals. And we have a decent amount of food. But is this Mega Sloth, like... The, I guess, like, we have a decent amount of animals now as well. Um, that are going to be using a lot of our food. So I think food might actually be something we are a little cautious about. Um, I think also now is the time uh, we could potentially do some sowing, get some hay grass going. Um, I think during the day it would potentially heat up to the point where the hay grass will grow a little bit might be worth considering um who's our crafter llama make some make some blocks for me we really need to get these blocks sorted um unfortunately i think what's going to happen is people are going to uh turn the blocks into traps we have so many to do. Um, so what we'll do is we'll just forbid that for now from happening. And we will let the blocks accumulate. Um, we have so many little resources on the side now. It's getting difficult to keep track. Um, keep adding these things here. Where are you taking these? They're right here. Uh, so we have 100, and we need 150. So we have, we need, oh, we're gonna need at least one more brick. Um, solar flare, that's not exactly ideal. Uh, so we are one. What if we just canceled that and then we built a copy and then we just forbade it for now and then we work on the crematorium so that's a lot of bodies in there and we really need them to not be like that um our our friend over here is doing doing a little better um but we will run some power that a ways. We can take full advantage. Um, well, that, that's a fun sound. Edgar's little 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 bio sculptor. It ends in 20 hours, and Edgar will be back among the healthy, uh, which is kind of neat. And then we could potentially look at running uh, running it again and getting some toes back. Um, meanwhile. I think that's done and good to go. So we just go uh, cremate corpse forever. Uh, clear all um, human corpses. We won't do colonists. Um, go. Do it. Havoc. Uh, you're on night shift. 
I don't know what you were doing. I probably should have paid attention. But this will be good for you. You're fairly happy. Um, beautiful. All these bodies are now out of the way. We can unforbid our traps. And yeah, that was actually pretty good, pretty productive. Um, I am looking at the food situation. It looks like we we might be we might be worried about food in the long term. And I think it's because we have a heck of a lot of animals. Um, we have a heck of a lot of animals. We might be eating some chicken. Like, you know, we, we might be putting some of these animals. Uh, we might be managing the auto slaughter a little bit. Um, max two, young two, um, max. I, th I mean, I think that's actually reasonable. So that should provide us with with chicken enough. Um, we should be having, oh my goodness, that is so many little animals running around. Uh, we have corn coming in. That'll be a big harvest. That'll give us a good amount of food. I mean, we still have a decent stockpile and a lot of meat, um, but I don't want to be in a situation where I have to hunt a bunch of animals. But like, I think I need to look it up, but I think the polar bear and, um, yeah, 1.6, like, is that a lot? Like, what does a muffalo eat? Um, 0.86, so it's like two muffalos. And then, uh, you know, what is a, what does a fully grown yak eat? Also 0.86, which is not very much. Polar bear is uh, meat per day. Um, okay, no. Food consumption is 0.5. So, um, polar bear is actually like very manageable. The mega sloth, though, is a freaking hog. Um, but I think the, in theory, the mega sloth is also like badass. I mean, look at it. Like, I want that thing on my team. Um, unfortunately, we don't have anyone who can train it. Um, the closest we have, uh, the closest we have a drunken, is Drunken Cat, I think. Um, we, we should have captured one of those, uh, Yatkin guys. Um, those little, like, feral fur men. Because, look at this happy little guy. We need him, and we need him, the polar bears, and the megasloths. We need them to be like trained guard animals, and we can send them to battle our foes. Um, anyways, I think we're going to end the episode here. We will continue building this nonsense in the next episode. Thanks for watching.